Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Fear. There is a, a lot of talk about fear in the news, in social media, uh, amongst friends, amongst families at dinner table. Uh, there's this constant just barrage of the word fear. And, and I wanted to address it because if you don't know my backstory, I faced fear, I believe, more than most people living today in terms of on a daily, hourly basis. For 14 years, I struggled with very severe anxiety disorder, meaning my entire day was planned around anxiety. I'll give you a quick example. For many years, I refused to shop at Publix. Even though I love the produce and I still love Publix today, I refused to shop there because I had so much fear of being stuck in a checkout line that had more than a couple people where I would literally have a full-on anxiety attack and either have to sit down and or leave, which happened one time. So I started going to Kroger. I was in Atlanta, Georgia at the time, and I started only shopping at Kroger only during certain hours and only because they had self-checkout where I didn't actually have to talk to someone and I could sit there and time it at a point where there would be no one there in line. I could go right up and get in and out. That's how bad my fear was. And I believe now that we're going through all this, I, I never really understood why God put me through all that. And when you talk, I'm talking 14 years, not 14 days, not 14 hours of having anxiety attacks. I'm talking this controlled my life every single day. At night, I went to bed thinking about it. I woke up in the morning thinking about it. I spent all day thinking about it. It made me physically sick. I missed some of my best friend's weddings because of it. It literally controlled my life. And so now looking back and looking forward at what we're going through right now, I realize why I went through it. And for some of you, this this might be the message that you needed to hear. Maybe that's why God put me on this earth and put me through all that, just to share my thoughts on fear, because I have lived it. And right now, ironically, I have hardly any fear. And that might sound crazy. I go, man, what's this guy? How, how does he not have any fear? And, and let me explain why. I believe that fear can kill you just as easily or maybe even easier than this coronavirus. I saw what it did to my body. I saw what happened when I kept saying, well, what if this and what if that and what and like my whole mind started racing about all these what ifs and many of you are probably doing it today. I, I've seen it in my own wife and some of my own friends. Well, well what if this and what if I, I, I can't get a job and, and what if I get fired tomorrow and what if we can't provide and blah, blah, blah. It, there's all these what ifs and I would urge you to stop the what ifs and maybe start asking, what if it doesn't happen, right? What if this coronavirus is gone by this summer? What if it's not? And, and I'll just tell you, I had many times where I asked those what ifs and eight out of 10 times, the what if never even came true. Two out of 10 times, it did. And it sucked. It was tough. I mean, like there were what ifs about, hey, me being in uh, in front of a big group at a, at a wedding where I was a, a best man in a wedding and literally feeling like I was about to collapse up there with everyone staring at me. My worst fears did come true. It was brutal. But guess what? I lived through it. I woke up the next day. I actually woke up the next day feeling proud that I did make it through it without completely passing out. And I tell you all this stuff because this is a tough time. And I know God does not want you to be fearful. I know God has this completely in control. And I know that we are all going to come out on the other side stronger and more confident and more resilient because of this. There is nothing good, and I would I would love to hear your thoughts if you think that somehow fear is going to help you get through this, that somehow fear is going to add value to it. And I know it's easier said than done because I live through it. I know how easy it is to get sucked in the fear vortex. But at the same point, I know now after living through it and battling it and constantly trying to debate it and dissect it in my head, I know there is a better way, and I know there is another way to get past the fear and to, and that really comes down to faith of course and trust and breathing stop watching the news all these things that so many of us are getting sucked into right now and it's only making it 
worse. As I said before, I mean, I, I had a point where I was physically sick by being afraid of what ifs. And in many cases, something that never even happened. But in my head, I kept thinking, oh my gosh, well, what if this and what if that? And, and it just absolutely does no good. And let me address something real quick for some of you might be saying, well, gosh, you need to be a little bit fearful. I disagree. Fear is not the same as being cautious and fear is not the same as being prepared. Those are two completely different things. God talks about fear in the Bible I noticed a couple hundred times the word fear is mentioned. In every point, he makes a, he makes a clear point to say, don't be fearful. I got your back. Like, don't be fearful. Trust in me. Don't be fearful. Have faith. And I, I urge all of you as we go through this to don't let fear control your lives, especially if you're around kids these kids, they can sense this stuff. I watch my kids every morning because there's a lot of stuff going there. They're confused, right? I got three young kids that are confused about why are they at home? Why are they downstairs right now doing doing their homework and watching a teacher online? What's going on here? Are we going to be okay? And they can sense it from a mile away. They can sense it from your body. They can sense it from your emotions, the way that you talk to your spouse or your loved ones or even them. They know when something is up, and it's not even fair to them to all of a sudden start getting them fearful. So I'm coming up every morning. I'm playing music. I'm just pumped because I trust God. I trust that we're going to get through this. We all know we and we know we're going to get through it, right? We we know that we've had so many different viruses and pandemics in this world and diseases over the last couple of thousand years. They've been documented and 100% of the time we get through them. Let me repeat that. 100% of the time we, we get through them and we always become stronger because of it. We find out new cures for this stuff. Like 100% of the time we get through it. That doesn't mean everyone gets through it. There's obviously people who die every day. People that die every day in car accidents. There's people that die from all kinds of things, but we know we are going to get through this as a society. And I tell you all that because I love you. I sent out an email here recently to to quite a few people on on the Salt Strong subscriber list and and just ask them, hey, like, what's on your mind right now? And it was just this constant, uh, like, I don't want to say a barrage, but the the number one thing was just that fear and the uncertainty. And and I just, it, it pains me to hear so many people even having to think about that. And so I want to start just like punching it right in the face and saying, let's not be fearful. Let's be optimistic. Let's 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 be full of faith. Let's be full of trust. And regardless of where you stand religiously, if you believe that you are here for some reason, and if you're not, then I, I don't really have too much to help you with there. But if you believe you were put here for some reason and you have some value to society, then have some faith. Have some trust in God. Or if you want to call it universe, whatever it is to you, have some trust that we will get through this and that it does you absolutely no good to keep asking, what if? It does absolutely no good to say, well, gosh, what if, what if this is continue to go on a a year from now? What if, you know, what if a million people die? I mean, what if they don't? What if they find a cure tomorrow? Let's talk about the positive side of things. And, and I think one final thing I would urge all you to do, I have completely turned off news. My wife even thinks I'm crazy. I've deleted news from my phone. And if, if you're wondering, hey, how, why is Joe not fearful? One, I'm not letting my mind go down that path. Two, I've got faith. And three, I'm just getting rid of all the crap out there. The news and all this media stuff is 100% just praying like, not praying, uh, praying is in the other way, like a, a predator on fear. They are literally, like, this is like a gold mine to them. Like, this is this is the perfect storm for news agencies. They wake up, and I know, obviously, there's some people in the news, and I'm not trying to say they're bad at all. I pray for all you guys as well. I know you, a lot of you are having to work from home if you're in the news. You are not a bad person, but in general, the media in general in the news they love, love, love fear, and they love to play off that fear. They know it gets the clicks. They know it gets the comments. They know it gets people riled up, and I honestly think it's a it's a shame. I would hope if you are in the news that you try to find some great stories of people doing good in this horrible time, yeah, that you find some stories of, of people that, that do have faith, and maybe there's more people going to an online church right now more than ever. Maybe there's more people turning to God and praying and helping a neighbor out and trying to build things within their communities. That's what I believe we need to focus on. So 
I'm going to share one last thing with you. And this is something that the first time I told my parents about my anxiety. And if you've heard some of my, my past podcasts, you know about this. I was really, really fearful to tell anyone about my fear. I thought it was going to make me look weak. I thought it was going to make me less of a man and less of a person. And and I was embarrassed even to tell my own parents. And, and at one point I thought I was dying because that's how my body felt because I was so engulfed and so in, absorbed in all of this daily fear and this anxiety. And I finally told my parents and my mom, you know, uh, obviously was devastated. You never want to hear your child um, just suffering. You know, you, you never want to hear a child going through a tough time. And uh, I, I know that probably killed them as parents, but I'll never forget what she told me. And at the time, I, I was not going to church. I was I had anxiety attacks even going to church. So I would stayed away from church, was not reading the Bible uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And um, she told me about Psalm 91. And at first I was like, oh, that's kind of corny. Like what's, what's a Psalm out of the Bible going to do? And, and she's like, you know, just, just read it. It, it helped uh, your grandmother, her mom get through some tough times uh, Why her husband was off, you know, in the, in the war. And, you know, that was well before you know, this is World War II. That was way before you had any means of communication, but snail mail through an actual physical letter through the post office. Um, and you can only imagine the kind of fear they had not knowing what was going on at all. And so this was the psalm that she would recite to herself every day, sometimes multiple times a day, just to get through it, to get her mind into a better place, and, and just to get her having full trust and full faith in God and that, uh, that he has a plan for all this. And so Psalm 91 is what I would repeat to myself over and over and over again. I have read this and memorized it. I used to say it in the shower every single day, multiple times a day. Anytime I felt that fear coming on, anytime I felt that grip trying to overtake me of the what ifs, what if that and what if this, I I'm just telling you, stop asking the what if, put yourself in a better mindset, go check out Psalm 91. No, actually, I'll read it to you. Let me pull it up here real quick. All right, Psalm 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High who will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Through a thousand... Though a, sorry, I've got my son crying in the background here. He's coming up from uh, homeschool. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the high, most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample up lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them, and I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. That was, that was a New Living Translation, so a little bit different than the one I had memorized. Um, really, really interesting that it says Dis deadly disease. Uh, the one I had memorized did not say that, uh, but it was obviously a different translation of it. So, wow, pretty crazy. Um, guys, that's it. Check out Psalm 91. Print it off. Put it on your desk. Put it on your breakfast table, wherever it is. Read it. Stop looking at the news so much. I, I promise you, if there's something urgent, your phone will alert you, as you guys might have seen this weekend uh, with these automatic phone alerts. You aren't missing out on that much uh, or anything at all. In fact, I, I think... I think sitting there and watching all this stuff and debating and all these what ifs can some cases make it worse and even cause you sickness when you didn't need to have it. So much love to everyone. Thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for, uh, thank you for listening to these podcasts 
and um, and and keep hitting me up with questions. Keep hitting me up with with different topics that that you want to discuss or that you want me to go find experts on. The fear one is one that I do not fear talking about by myself anytime. Just because I've dealt with it, I dealt with it for so many days, so many hours, so many years, and uh, and I truly believe that that God put me through that so I could share some of these stories with you during times like this. Do not be fearful. God's got this. Cause vision, it's in my soul. It was passed down to me from the days of old. Find us on the water if there was a way. It's been said my papa, he wrote the book on catching big reds and 20 pound snook. I wish I knew. So oh.